his kingdom, you are having possibility. I mean, impossible stops. What doctor says, what uh, uh, um, judges says, doesn't matter anymore. It is what God says that matters. Because this is what's going to come to pass. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So the will of God will be done only when the kingdom is established. When the, when the kingdom is not yet established, the will cannot be done. So Jesus did not just give them this, you know, succession of events for nothing. It was by purpose. He said, let your kingdom come. And once your kingdom will be established, then your will will be done. Because we are in the kingdom. You cannot go to UK and apply South African law. It's not going to work. You cannot go to Zimbabwe and apply South African law. If you are in South Africa, abortion until 12 weeks is acceptable. But if you go to Dati Mugabe, he doesn't accept such things. There are things which are accepted in this country. You know, I, I watched a, um, a, a documentary of a lady who was old. And according to her, God was forgetting to kill her. So she said that she's tired of being on the earth. She wants to do a danasia, to stop her life. And then where she was living, it, it was not allowed. Then there was another European country where that law was already accepted. What, what she did, she moved in that country and she went there and did euthanasia. I mean, she committed suicide. Yeah. Stupid. According to suicide here, and there is euthanasia because somebody just decided to kill you. Let me just bring your attention. You are not the owner of your life. Amen. God is the owner of your life. Amen. He decides when to stop it. He decides when to start it. Yeah. The very same way you did not have any say when you came in, you do not have any say when you leave. Yeah. God will decide when you leave. The very same way he decides when you enter the earth. So when you kill yourself, you have killed somebody. Don't say it is my own life. It is not your life. You have no life. The life that we have is the life that God has given you. If you decide to take it, it is a sin in the eyes of God. Listen, your law may be Nas law, but if they are against what God said, your law, the law of your country are no longer law to follow. You don't have to grab any law. Make sure that the law you are following in your country is the law that pleases God. Don't say no, it's free here. You are not free. You are free in the boundaries of the word of God. Hallelujah. So we have been learning about the kingdom of God. And we define the kingdom of God. We say the kingdom of God is not a place. The kingdom of God is not somewhere that you go where you are in the kingdom of God. We say the kingdom of God is a way of thinking, is a way of doing things, is a way of uh, seeing life, is a the way of apprehending life which is in line with the word of God, which is in line with what God says. That is the kingdom of God. So when Jesus said, let the kingdom of God come, he wanted to say, let your way of seeing things, let your way of apprehending things come on earth so that people may see the way you see. You know, it is a blessing for you to see the way God sees things because the way God sees things is always on your advantage. The way God sees things is always on your good. And we say that the kingdom of God we need to enter in the kingdom of God. And we enter in the kingdom of God by receiving Jesus as our personal Lord and Savior. And we are allowed to enter in the kingdom of God. And once we are entered in the kingdom of God, it means that we have renewed our mind and we have aligned our mind according to the mind of God. According to the mind of the Bible, then we can see the benefit of the kingdom of God. And we say, the kingdom of God has principles. And one of the principles of the kingdom of God, it is a kingdom of possibility. In the kingdom of God, nothing is impossible. Jesus told through the angels, he told uh, Mary, that what is impossible to man, it is possible to God. So the kingdom of God, the kingdom we've entered, is a kingdom of possibility. I like this kingdom. When you are in this kingdom, you are having possibility. I mean, impossible stops. What doctor says, what uh, uh, um, judges says, doesn't matter anymore. It is what God says that matters. 
because this is what's going to come to pass. And we say another principle of this kingdom, it is a kingdom of faith. The currency in the kingdom of God, the currency, the money that you use, that you should use to buy things in this kingdom, this money, it is called faith. Faith becomes the currency when you enter in the kingdom of God. Faith becomes the only currency you can use to purchase whatever you need in the kingdom of God. There is a market in the kingdom of God, a market in which everything is available. The Bible says in the book of Philippians chapter 1, verse 3, that he blessed us with all kinds of blessings. In other words, he made everything that you need available in the market. But in that market, for you to pay charge, or for you to take anything from that market, you need to bring currency. And that currency is called faith. So in this kingdom, is a kingdom of faith. If you have faith, you can make everything possible. With faith, everything becomes possible. We say that faith does not make things easy, but it makes things possible. No matter how hard they can be, no matter how hard it can be in your life, but if you have faith, you must know it's going to be possible. It might be hard as it can want to be hard, but by my faith, I will make it possible. So in the kingdom of God, we use faith to picture things, whatever you want. Remember what Jesus used to say. To everybody who was coming to seek anything from Jesus, Jesus was answering, your faith has done you well. So your faith this morning will do you well. So if you are suffering, it is not God's fault. You are suffering because you don't trust. You don't believe. You don't trust God. You don't have faith in God. As I said last time, we have faith on the pilot that we don't know. We have faith on the driver of the taxi that we don't know. We have faith on the doctor that we don't even, uh, we don't even uh, show about the qualification. But yet we give our life so they can operate on us. You never ask the doctor to, before operating on you, show me your degrees, uh, show me your experience. You just trust him. He said, I'm going to operate on you. You trust. You trust the anesthetist is going to make you sleep. You don't even know if you're going to wake up or not. You give your life for those couple of minutes that you'll be out, you'll be sleeping, your life depends completely on that person. But still you trust that person. You give him life. How do you not trust God? How do you not trust God? We have proven already how great he is and how capable he is. This morning, I want to lift up your faith so that you may trust God. You may trust the living Jesus. You may trust him because those who trusted him before you, they never been put on to shame. Those who put it, that trust in him, they never been put on to shame. He's not going to start with you. Hallelujah. Amen. So this is a kingdom of possibility. And we say, this is a kingdom of provision. Oh, I like it. A kingdom of provision. You will lack nothing in this kingdom. Whatever is needed is provided in the kingdom. You see, people are going on toy toy. People are going on toy toy because there is no uh, service delivery. There's no water, there's no electricity. That's why people are going on the street and toy toying. Let me tell you, in the kingdom of God, there is no reason to toy toy. Those who have entered this kingdom, none of them have a toy toy. Because everything it is provided. And as I say, Philippians chapter 1 is telling us that uh, he blessed us with all kinds of blessing. This is a kingdom of provision. In this kingdom, we know that everything it is provided. And our king, as was introducing us into that kingdom, he took, you know, he took uh, 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 the, I mean, the ability to scream clearly so that you may know it. He said that everything it is done. In other words, everything it is provided. Marriage is provided. Amen. Healing is provided. Amen. Jobs are provided. Amen. Fruit of the womb are provided. Provided in the kingdom of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And the fourth thing we say about this kingdom, this is a kingdom of declaration. This is where I'm going to start this morning. This is a kingdom of what? Of declaration. In this kingdom, things are happening when we declare them. Things are happening for those who are declaring it. I want to encourage you to be a man of declaration. You see, you are afraid to declare because you are afraid that what you declare is not going to happen. Remember, you are not anybody. You are the child of the Most High God. 
God said in the book of Psalm that uh, I say you are God, but you are dying like Mary. Amen. I say you are God, but you are doing things like human being. Human being, they only see things happening. They have no power over it. But you are not a, 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 a simple human being. You are a special man. You are a special woman. Because power is on your mouth. Hallelujah. But before we to go there, let me maybe explain again about kingdom as introducing this uh, power of declaration or declaration in the kingdom. You know, a kingdom is a territory, a country which is led by a king. That is a kingdom. And a king never been voted. That is the difference. In other countries, they have president because you vote them. You decide who to put them. <laughs> Hallelujah. But in the kingdom, you don't decide because king receives it from his, you know, his parents. He received that kingdom. So he is king. You come and find him king. You're not going to remove him. We saw in the United Kingdom, when the Queen Elizabeth II died, somebody else took directly the, the power. They did not even say, no, let's try to check if the guy is a, is, no, directly. They knew already before her to die, they knew who was going to take over. Amen. That is the kingdom. So we are in the kingdom whereby there, were, there never been any election to make Jesus the king. Jesus has been king from eternity. And he is a faithful king. Nobody can remove our king. Our king is a faithful king. He's a great king. That's why the Bible calls him the king of kings. The Bible called him that he is the Lord of Lord. Hallelujah. He is Adonai Adonim, meaning the Lord of Lords. If they are kings, he's the king about them. Hallelujah. If they are great, he's greater about them. If they are powerful, he's powerful about them. If they are people who are great, he's greater about the greats. He is the king of kings. So we are in the kingdom where our king is not only our king, he's the king of anybody else who can name himself a king. Imagine. Hallelujah. So a kingdom is actually a government who imposes his authority over a territory, which is called a country. And that territory, in when, as far as the kingdom of God is concerned, that territory, it is your mind, it is your heart. So when the kingdom of God is taking his reign or is reigning, is not reigning in South Africa. But is reigning in the heart of human being. So Jesus is not the king only of everyone, but is a king in the heart of those who have made him their personal Lord and Savior. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So the kingdom of God, his reign is not in Rustenburg. The kingdom of God is reign, it is in Rustenburg, in the heart of people who have made him personal Lord and Savior. Jesus did not bring religion. Listen to me very carefully. Jesus never brought religion on earth. What Jesus brought, it was not religion. He brought a kingdom. Where he is reigning. Religion is a bunch of things that you have to obey, that you have to do all the time. But Jesus didn't bring that. He brought a renewal of man, a new kingdom, whereby he is reigning as a king. And that kingdom is not on the earth. That kingdom is in the heart of people. You should ask yourself if Jesus is your king. If Jesus is your king, he shall be reigning in your heart. If Jesus is your Lord, he shall be lordshipping in your heart. Hallelujah. So now, in this kingdom, in this territory, I told you last time, the kingdom of God, what people are looking for is the kingdom of God. Beloved, People are using what I mean, they're using religion to reach something. Even you and me, we came here for a reason. We came here because Jesus promised us eternal life. He promised us something because there is something that we are aiming, and we know the person who can give us that is Jesus Christ. People are going left and right, fighting. Having uh, rebellions left and right. What are they looking for? They are looking for security, for safety. Isn't it? 
If you go, even here in South Africa, Ntati Malema is making all the laws that he's making because he wants under bracket that the South African to be good. He wants the economy to be good. He wants our social to be good. He wants our politics to be good. Look the people are fighting. People go on the street. Why? Because they want more safety. They want more safety because they are killing us on our township. They are killing. We want more safety. Beloved, let me already tell you. As far as the earth government is concerned, that safety will never come. Amen. It will never come. It will never come. That's why Jesus brought us another kingdom. He said, if you enter in this kingdom, you will find what you cannot find in your other kingdom. Because the Bible says in the book of 1 John chapter 5, verse 19, that we know that we belong to God. But the entire world is what? Is under the power of darkness. And as long as the entire world is under the power of darkness, there will never be peace. There will never be tranquility. There will never be safety. Safety is in this kingdom that Jesus is bringing. Yeah. That's why he brought us a new kingdom. He didn't bring us a religion. He brought us a kingdom. He said, enter in the kingdom of God. And he said, you must search for that kingdom. He said, search for the kingdom of God. Because if you enter in the kingdom of God, even if you live in the kingdom of South Africa, but as long as you are in the kingdom of God, you are safe. You have peace. When other people will be crying that everything is going up, you, you will still have peace, uh, peace because you belong to another kingdom and you have other laws that is governing your life. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. If you want peace, then you must enter in the kingdom of God because there is going to learn it today. It is a kingdom of peace. There is peace, there is joy in that kingdom. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Now, this is the reason why, beloved, we need to seek the kingdom of God. If you look in the Bible, Jesus spoke about the kingdom of God several times. He was speaking always about the kingdom. And he compared the kingdom of God to many things. He said the kingdom of God is like a yeast. You put it in a bit of bark, a bark of, a, of dough. It's going, to, it's going to increase. He said the kingdom of God is like somebody who has found a treasure in his uh, in his. Uh, uh, a field and he sells everything just to take care of that field. He said the kingdom of God is like this, like that. Why? Because what Jesus brought is the kingdom of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And in that kingdom we learn already three principles of the kingdom of God. Now let's go to the fourth principle of the kingdom of God. We say this is the kingdom of declaration. In the book of Proverbs chapter 18 verse 21. Proverbs 18, 21, and Romans chapter 10, verse 9, we are going to learn that in this kingdom, we need to declare things. If you want to see things happening, you better declare them. If you want to see things happening in your life, you better say them. You better confess them. You better declare them in your life. The Bible said, the tongue has what? Power. The power. What is power? Power is the ability to influence. Is the ability to change, is the ability to transform, is a, the ability to impose your law. A person who is in power is a person who imposes his law. If I have power over you, I am going to impose you my law. If I have power over you, I am going to dictate you what to do because I have power over you. So the Bible said that tongue have this ability to impose what it says. Now, unfortunately, there is a danger in the tongue. In the tongue, you have the power of life, but you have the power of death. Declaring what you are declaring, depending on what you are declaring. Amen. When you declare negative things, it's going to happen. Because the, the tongue has power. When you declare positive things, it's going to also happen. Because the tongue has power. If it was not so, the Lord wouldn't say that. The Bible says that the, the tongue has power power of life and death. And those who love it, those who love their tongue, those who love their tongue will eat its fruit. How much you long you love your tongue? How do you use your tongue? What to confession do you do? Because when you enter in the kingdom of God, your tongue has power now. Whatever you declare will happen. I am encouraging you to start declaring good things upon your life. Our father David used to declare good things upon his life. He used to declare that I am going not to die. 
I'm going to live and I want to testify the goodness of the Lord. He was, he was confessing, he said, Lord, with you alone, I will go and fight the army, the entire army, you and me alone. He used to declare. What do you used to declare in your life? Romans chapter 10, verse 9. Even salvation comes by declaration. Even salvation comes by declaration. That's why those who are going for evangelism, it is important for you to make people confess Jesus. You must tell them, I accept Jesus as my personal. You must do that. Yeah. It's important because from that comes salvation. The Bible says, if you declare with your mouth, not with your heart, with what? With your, your mouth. Because declaration is important. In this kingdom, we need to declare things. The Bible says, if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart. So what you declare needs to be believed in your heart. Very important. I don't want you to quote me and to quote me wrong. If you have to declare, you must believe what you are declaring. Amen. It will happen if you believe. Remember, this kingdom is a kingdom of faith. If you declare what you believe, it's going to happen. And the more you declare it, the more you start believing in it. The often you declare something upon your life, the often you are going to believe what you are declaring. If you declare negative things upon your life, ah, me is finished. Me, ah, you start. Ah, you, you can go. Me is finished. It's going to be like that. Because you end up believing what you declare over your life. <laughs> if you always make uh, negative declaration about your husband, negative declaration about your children, negative declaration about your country, like people always do bad declaration about South Africa. Always. Ah, this country, ah, it's finished. Ah, this country, this country, ah, this when will you declare that this country is going to be okay? Declare that it shall be well. God shall raise a new race of politicians. Those who are going to believe in the Lord. Those who are going to fear God. Those who are going to work for the country. Those who are going to carry the country in their heart. It is time for you to start doing good declaration for this country. We have this issue of uh, Lord shedding. But you can declare. How many people are always negative about that? Even when I'm talking like this, people are going to be half ah, faster. Nah, you forget about it. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen because you are declaring. Remember, our kingdom is a kingdom of possibility. Impossible become possible. You can change this country by your prayer. That's why God put you here. He could have put you in another country. He put you here so that you may change this country by your prayer. Listen, if you don't take care of this country, this country, this country will take care of you. Somebody say, if you don't take care of politics, politics will take care of you. If you don't, you always say, no, me, I'm not going to take me, me, I'm a Christian. No politics, no politics. They will legislate your law that's going to be against your Christianity. They will impose you those law because you don't want to impose them the law of your kingdom. Impose them the law of your kingdom because we have a kingdom of possibility. The kingdom of declaration. Declare about our army. Declare about our police. Declare about our judiciary uh, I mean, uh, area. Declare about it. Declare about, about our presidency. Declare. Declare about them. Declare good things. And believe that's going to happen. Amen. Hallelujah. Declare. Declare. Hallelujah. The Bible says, if you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that he was raised from the dead, you what? Saved. This is a kingdom of declaration. Start declaring about the food you are eating. I declare this food is good for my body. I declare that I'm only eating, eating a, a, a piece of bread, but I declare that he has everything for my body in the name of Jesus. Their people are eating nice food, but still they're getting very bad health for the food that they're eating. Declare over the water that you're drinking. Amen. Declare over your land. Declare over what you're planting. Declare over your children. When they go to school, declare over them that you shall be the head and not the tail. You shall be above and not beneath. You shall be the first and not the last. Stop insulting your kids that you're stupid like your mother. Stop doing that because by doing that, they will be stupid. And then you will be the one who will be crying. God, why give me stupid children? God did not give you stupid, stupid children. You made them stupid by the declaration of your mouth. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Stop declaring about your husband. This one will never change. You will never change. <laughs> Declare that my husband, you will change in the name of Jesus. When he's sleeping, you put your head over on him and declare you are my husband. 
surrender. You must change it in the name of Jesus. You must not go anywhere else. You must come to me. You must see me attractive in the name of Jesus. Declare. You always do bad declaration. That's why bad things are happening to you. That's why negative things are happening to you. Because of your declaration. Change your declaration. Let your declaration change your situation. Let your declaration influence your situation. But do not allow your situation to influence your declaration. Many of us here, our pain has changed our declaration. Pastor, just leave it. Pastor, just leave it. You, why I should leave it? I should leave it because your pain has changed your declaration. But do not allow your pain to change your declaration. Declare. Declare. If God has given you the breath of life until today, it is because God is saying that it is still possible. Amen. If it was no longer possible, God would have taken you. If God left you to be alive this, this moment, it is because God sees that it is still a hope in your situation. Yes, I want to tell somebody this morning, your situation, there's still a hope. There's still a hope in that situation. There's still a hope in that problem. There's still hope in that issue. If there was no longer hope, you would have been gone. The Bible says, for all those who live, there's still hope. Even an alive dog is better than a dead lion. It is possible, brother. Your problem is your declaration. Stop being negative. Always negative. You know, my pastor, I don't know about God. Hey, I say, yeah, forget it. You know, God, hey, no. Declare. This kingdom is a kingdom of declaration. It shall be okay with me. You know, I like this kind of Christian. When you call them, you say, how are you? They don't even say, fine. They say, I'm blessed. How are you? I'm blessed. Oh, I like that one. Yeah. How are you? I'm blessed. How are you? I'm blessed. Meaning, I've been empowered to improve. Uh -huh. Even if right now nothing is happening, but I believe that I've been empowered to improve. Yeah. I will go further. It will be okay with me. How are you? It will be okay. How are you? Everything is fine. How are you? God has it under control. Hey. You declare. Why do you always have negative words? Hallelujah. Yeah. It's a kingdom of declaration. Positive declaration. You see, sometimes you look at something and you think that you're not going to be able to make it. It is because this is a vision. This is a, a view. If you change the view, your appreciation of the things changes already. So what you do when things are difficult, change the view of that. Declare different things about this. Mathematics, I'm not going to make it. I'm not going to make it. Say, okay, mathematics, I'm going to make it in the name of Jesus. I will make it in the name of Jesus. And as you say, as it's going to happen, hallelujah. Do not stop saying it until you see it. Do not stop saying it until you see. Do not stay, uh, stop confessing until you see it happen. Confess it until it happens. The fifth principle of the kingdom or secret of this kingdom, the kingdom Jesus brought us is a kingdom of love. This kingdom functions with love. If there is no love in this kingdom, you can't function. Now, the Bible says in the book of John chapter 13, verse 34 to 35. John 13, 34 to 35. And 1 John chapter 3, verse 18. 1 John 3, 18. Jesus said this. A new command I give you as a king. Remember, in every kingdom there are commands. In every kingdom there are laws. In every kingdom there are principles. In this kingdom of Jesus, he said, I give you a command for my kingdom. He's not giving it for everyone. He's giving it for those who claim that they are in the kingdom of God. And here I'm not speaking to everybody else. Even those who are watching us on Facebook, I'm not speaking to everyone. I'm speaking to those who have entered in the kingdom of God. If you say you're a child of God, you mean that you've entered the kingdom of God, this is your command. Amen. The Bible said, a new command I give you. What is that command? Love one another. How? As I have loved you. How did Jesus love us? He gave himself to us. So if you love 
love your neighbor, if you love me, you must be able to give yourself for me. But let me just remind you what is happening with you. When I come in your house and there is food, what do you do? You delay it to come on the table because you don't want me to eat. Because you, you, you presume that it is little. That is not going to be enough for you and for me. So you prefer you to eat. And even if I sit there and busy yawning, ah, you don't care. You don't care. You know why you don't care? Because you don't love me. Or maybe you love me, but not as Jesus loved us. Because Jesus loved us at a point he gave himself to us. How can you accept you are okay when I am suffering? You are fine when your neighbor is in trouble. And you know it very well when he's in trouble, but you refuse to do anything. And the Spirit of the Lord is speaking to you. Do something for your brother and for your sister, but still you don't do anything. You see, you love, but you don't love as Jesus loved the church. If you are a member of the kingdom of God, you shall love the way Jesus loved the church. He gave himself. He poured out himself. Jesus said, there is no greater love than giving his life for the person that you love. There's no greater love than that. And 1 John chapter 3. 1 John chapter 3 verse 18. He is giving us, is even detailing, giving details about this principle of love. That you should not only love with your mouth. You should stop sending me the hearts on WhatsApp. That does not mean love. Many of you, if you see the heart that young men see their heart, you are overexcited because oh, he loves me. He doesn't love you by that. Amen. Before you sleep, you must, you sleep, you must hear that voice. You know, I love you. I love you. If I, if, I, if I don't see you, I don't eat. I don't eat. How is sustaining his life if he doesn't eat? <laughs> Hallelujah. The Bible says, dear children, let us not love with word and speech, but with Action. Love can only be defined by action. I will see what you do to me. It will determine if you love me or not. I will see the way you treat me. It will show if you love me or not. I will see the way you are treating me. That will determine if you love me or not. The way you treat me shows how much you love me. The way you care about me shows how much you love me. The way I care about you will show how much I love you. Not how much I say. Not how much I send you the heart on, on WhatsApp. The big one. You know nowadays there's this kind of heart that also is like beating. <laughs> and when you see it, you are so happy. You are like, oh, I am loved. I'm like, you are not loved. <laughs> I'm seeing young lady that beat them every day and goes back to the boyfriend. Who never even paid any lobola. Busy beating you on the way of school. And you are saying that he loved me. He loved me. How can you beat the person you love? The Bible say that you, the wife is your own body. If you are beating that person, you love the person. I don't understand the ladies of today. I really don't. The guy will beat him, but he'll go back there. He will do all sort of things, he'll go back there. He will ask, you will give them advice. After you give the advice, he goes back there. That love is really blind. Hallelujah. Do not love by word only. In the kingdom of God, we love with action. We show our love. If I love you, I will care about you. If I love you, I'm not going to bedmouth you after you leave me. If you are bedmouthing somebody, you don't love that person. What motivates you to bedmouth the person is, is a lack of love. Because if you love the person and the person has done wrong, you will go and see the person and say, brother, sister, do I, this one, this one, I think it is wrong. If you keep on bedmouthing your brother and your sister, it is because you don't have love. And your perfect subject that you love so much is only been you. When you open the Bible, you you start you start sleeping. When they bring that the subject of Ben Murphy, hey, you know that brother, you wake up. Hey, I know, I know that brother. <laughs> you do not have love. There is not the principle of the kingdom. In this kingdom, we are led by love. Amen. Look what love says in First Corinthians chapter three, chapter thirteen. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4 to 8. This is what love should be in your life. If you have love, 
in love of the kingdom. This is what love should be. First Corinthians chapter 13, and verse 4. First Corinthians 13, 4. Look what, lay, what love does. Do you love me? I'm happy because you are thinking twice before you answer. Do you love me? Yes. You are thinking, do, 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 do I really love this guy? <laughs> keep on insulting him at home. Do I really love this guy? I keep on bad mouthing him. Do you really love the person next to you? If you love the person next to you, how you don't care about that person? How you don't do things for the benefit of people around you? You see, when you do things, Love will motivate you to not only think about you. When you think about yourself, it is no longer love, it is selfishness. Yeah. Selfishness will make you think about you first. And you don't care. You see, selfishness is even when you go to the toilet. You find it clean, but when you are finished, you don't care about how you left it. How you're going to leave it. You left it. You just leave. You don't even know. Selfish. When you go there, somebody make sure that it is clean. Make sure you leave it clean. Yeah. Or oh, it's a public toilet. It's a public a, a toilet at work. You don't use it alone. There are some other people are coming to that toilet. How come? How dare you that you find it clean and you leave it? At least leave it at the level you find it. Yeah, come on, guys. That is love. You, only, you also think about the people you don't even know. Yeah. Don't just go on the streets and throw whatever you want on the, the street. It is nicely written there. Do not lit here. No littering here. But you finish to boom on the street. You see, a good Christian shall be a good citizen. Amen. When you don't pay your tax, you don't pay your tax. Oh, it's sad. Sad. save a lot of money. They are stealing money. They are stealing money. It's okay, they are stealing money, but you are among the ones who are stealing. Because we're not paying tax. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Love the soldiers. How are they going to find money to buy clothes for our soldiers? Because the soldiers, our tax is paid, do you know that? For them to have nice uniform, for them to have nice weapon, to protect you. You are screaming, no, oh, they don't have weapon, but you don't pay your tax. You're like a pastor, no, please. Love is patient. Love is patient. Love is kind. And does not envy. It does not boost. Continue. And is that what? Proud. You see, when, especially when you wear a new cloth, all of us shall see it. The way you dance that day. You are not even dancing for the glory of God. You are dancing to show. When I'm dancing, you must push it a bit down. You create your dance just to show. And especially if it has a small written there. Ungaru. Huh? Hand must be up. You must see the ungaru. It is good. But God is seeing your heart. He's seeing the motivation of every of your action. You see the problem with God? He sees the heart. He sees every motivation. What motivates you to do things? This kingdom is a kingdom of love. It's a kingdom of humility. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, give us verse 5. Verse 5, quickly. It does not dishonor others. If you love me, why you want always to put me down? Why in the conversation you want always the other brother to be seen as bad as you to be seen as good? You always make sure that others are wrong. You see that sister? You know they're singing, yes, but I don't know about the singing of that sister. <laughs> Come then sing. Let's hear, let's hear you. Let's hear your voice here. If you're not going to run away. You will run, you will take away even the Holy Spirit. You know they are singing that takes your experience. <laughs> it is not self-seeking, selfish. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrong. It doesn't keep grudges in the heart. So if you love, you don't keep grudges. If you say, I forgive you, you forgive. 
You know this lady to always remind her husband. In 1974, remember what you did to me. But you forgive. You forgave it, but why are you recalling the wrong? How are you keeping the record of wrong if really you're forgiven? Brother, I've been counting. This is the fourth time I'm forgiving you. The fifth time, I'll show you. <laughs> Hallelujah. This is a kingdom of love. Let people see. You see, remember I told you the first last Sunday, the kingdom must seduce people around. It must be, oh wow, which kingdom is that? No, let me come to your kingdom. Because they see the way we live. Because they see love in us. People will follow you when they see love. But if they see that even in your church, when you go to the saloon, when they are doing your hair, you are sitting there, they did not even ask you. Ah, you know in our church, our leaders, who did ask you? <laughs> and you start, that one, that one, that one, that one. Now you think that that person, Tomorrow you are having days of glory. Mama, can you come to our days of glory? You say, remember the no, no leaders there. Okay, no, cannot come to that church with you. And sometimes things that you are confessing are things you, you don't even know. You have no clue of what has happened. Beloved, don't speak about things that you don't know. Don't speak about things you did not witness. If they ask you, say, I did not witness, I was not there. I know the, the human nature it will always make you to like talking. You know, you will always try to add something in everything. You listen, I always tell you out of this pulpit. Until you speak, you will never be seen as stupid. Until you speak. So there are certain moments, keep quiet. Don't say anything. What do you know about that? Jesus himself, they ask him questions. Are you the king? Pilate said, I'm asking you, are you a king? Look at Pilate, Pilate, look at him. Pilate said, don't you know that I have the power to, he said, no, you can't have any power over me. If power is not given to you from heaven. You know, some certain things you don't have to say, especially if you don't know. How many times you have added things on people's life? You know what motivates you? It's because you don't have love. Because love will protect the person that I love. I will protect them. Even if I know you has done wrong, but it's my brother, let me protect my brother. It is my wife, let me protect my wife. Let me protect my husband. Don't take your husband everywhere. You start telling everything about your husband. This guy's been, you know, he doesn't even give money. This car, I'm the one who bought it. This house, I'm the one who it. Now, how people will consider your husband? How many people has already done their husband that way? You go to your children, and then you take your father. If it was not because of me, and the money of your, your grandfather, you couldn't bring to school. Now the children, how they want to respect their father? This is the kingdom of? Love. Do you have love? Yes. In this kingdom, love, the love that you have, is so powerful that we can even love our enemies, those who do wrong to us. Luke chapter 6, verse 27, 28. Luke 6, 27, 28. Luke chapter 6. This is a kingdom of love. Do you have love? I mean, do you have love like the love of Jesus Christ? Do you love people around you? Do you love your enemy? The Bible said, but to you who are listening, I say, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Do good to those who hate you. In this kingdom, we are able to love our enemies. We are able to do them good. They will say, but ah, this guy, how come I did him wrong? But he gives me back good. How, may, how much do you love your enemies? The people that you know, this guy, he has declared war of me. How much do you greet people who don't like you? Do you greet them? Do you greet them? Do you greet people that clearly they have said that they don't like you? No. They don't love you. What do you say? Ah, if he doesn't like me, I don't love him also. No problem. Let's just sleep like that. Yeah. How people will know that you belong to another kingdom? How people will know that you belong to another better kingdom? You are like them. Jesus said, if you only greet people are greeting you, what is the difference between you and the, and the Pharisees? If your justice cannot be more than the justice of the Pharisees, how difference will you make? The Bible says we should love our enemy and do good to those who hurt us. Do good to those who are being bad to us. And Apostle Paul is telling the Roman that when you do so, you are putting fire charcoal 
on top of their head that's going to bend them. Do good to those who do you wrong. Pastor, I'm so angry at getting, I don't greet him because he doesn't greet me. No. You don't greet him because he greets you. You greet him because you, you are belonging to a better kingdom. Amen. You belong to a kingdom of love. Amen. You love even your enemies. Imagine, brothers and sisters, Jesus, when he was dying at the cross, he was surrounded, 80%, if not more, of people who were surrounding him were people that he helped. All of them helped them. But that day, they were busy crucifying him instead of hating them. Because, firstly, they accused him falsely. And they were killing him wrongly. But at the cross, he said, Father, forgive them. How often do you even pray for those who are your enemies? How often do you pray for those who do you wrong? How often do you pray for those who are tormenting your life? Those who are doing you wrong, what you the tendency is to do what? Is to hate them. I hate this guy. I hate this brother. I hate this sister. Why? Because you don't have it. Our love must be different. We must not love anyhow. We must love the way Jesus loved us. We were, we were worthy to be hated, but Jesus still loved us. There are people who are worthy to be hated in your life, but still love them. There are people here, they don't greet their in-laws. Especially the mother-in-law. I don't know what is happening in the mother. <laughs> Thank God me, at least I'm not there. The mother-in-law and the daughter-in-law usually is always a fight. Thank God for this beautiful woman. She is able to receive her mother-in-law nicely, talk, and I like that one. God bless you. So, you know the mother-in-law? For the sister-in-law, somebody who married your, your brother, you always have that, and he doesn't know how to cook, that's not the way, 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 that's always like that. If you check very well in your heart, it's a problem of love. Okay, let's set up the problem of love now. Let's set it up. Let us reset it this morning. Let it set it. Let our love become a love that cares about others. A love that is patient. A love that is taking care of others. Let's change our love. Because of time, I'm going to stop there. I know we're going to have time to continue with other things. But we have learned other keys and other um, principles of that kingdom, the kingdom of God. We've learned that this is a kingdom of love. And this is a kingdom of declaration. So rise up on your feet so that you can declare certain things in your life. Hallelujah. There are things that you can declare in your life. There are things that you can declare in your life. God will not going to do them until you declare them. God is not going to do them until you declare them. Hallelujah. You need to reset your heart. You need to reset your definition of love. What you've been defining as love, it was not love. It was something else. Because if you've been loving, you wouldn't be where you are. You wouldn't be treating the person next to you the way you treat that person. You wouldn't be so selfish as you are today. This is a kingdom of love. Oh Lord, we need you, Jesus. Come and help us. Beloved, I want you not to look at your own life. I believe you are in the kingdom of God. But you have been walking as a rebel in the kingdom of God. You have been breaking the kingdom's law. You have been breaking the king's principles. You were not declaring upon your life. Or maybe you have been declaring but negative declaration. You have been not having love. You have been not loving people around you. Oh, the love was not as the love of Christ. The first thing I'm going to say, Lord, forgive me. I've been the witchcraft of my own. Tell him, Lord, forgive me for declaring bad things upon myself. For calling curse upon my own life. I can't of confession.
They don't forgive me because I did not show love. I show hatred. I show anger. Speak to God. Speak to God. Speak to Him. Tell Him, Lord, forgive me. Father, how many times we have been the witchcraft of our own life because of the negative declaration, because of the negative belief, because of the negative word that we utter from our own mouth against our children, against our lives, against our nation, against our husband and wife, against our families. But forgive. Forgive for the lack of love. We hate, O oh Lord, hatred in our heart. This is from the King of God. The kingdom that you are bringing us, the kingdom of love, is a kingdom of patience that you should care about others. That we should love others the way you love the church, Jesus. Forgive. Forgive us, O oh Lord. Forgive us, O oh Lord. Now speak to him. Ask him, Lord, Give me positive declaration. Tell him, Lord, help me to confess what you say. Let me confess your word in my mouth. Tell him, Lord, now I will confess your word. I will confess your promises. Even if the reality will be opposite of what I confess, but my confession will change my reality. Speak to him now. Tell him, Lord, fill me with your love. Filled with the love, the Bible says, the Spirit of God will fill us with the love of God. Ask the Spirit of God to fill your heart with love. To take away that hatred. To take away that anger that has been tormenting your heart. Speak to Him. Spirit of God, help us. Spirit of God, help us. Help us, oh Jesus. Come and help us. In the name of Jesus. Let's pray together. Say, Lord Jesus, forgive me for so much negative word that I've had that from my mouth. Forgive me, Lord. I became the witchcraft of my own life. The witchcraft of my family, of my church, and of my country. Lord, I revoke every negative word that I release from my mouth in the name of Jesus. I cancel every negative word that I release from my mouth. I replace it with the positive word, the word of God in the name of Jesus. So Lord, fill my heart with your love. Fill my heart with the true love. Let me show love not only say love, I will say and I will live love in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Do you believe that you are changed? Give Jesus a round of applause.